What tends to happen with these films is that I shoot a bunch of footage as life happens and then I get caught up in living more life and shooting more life and then as a byproduct of all that living, laughing, and loving, <laughs> I end up with like a major backlog. So this is a long ass film and it's just a bunch of things that happened since the last extract. Alright, that's pretty much it. Enjoy. So there's this sex club and it's always piqued my interest. You see, I grew up in trivia law and a concept as such is something far beyond my teenage pubescent self could have even dreamt of. I'm a curious fucking person. Far too curious at points. I like to see things. I like to know things. I like to get to the very core of them. You see, a bit ago, a woman I met with a beautiful dog during a park yoga session told me she happened to work at that sex lounge. And she told me that she'd get me in for free. Which was great, because I had absolutely no intention to pay the ludicrous amount of a hundred smackaroonies per man to get through that door. I wasn't really feeling my outfit that day, and to be fair with you, I don't really know what one's supposed to wear to a sex lounge. Luckily, a random woman in my subway ride there gave me the confidence boost I needed. Black don't crack. Asian don't raise on, Indian don't lean on, and white get Botox real tight. She also told me a rather lewd joke that I laughed at, but I don't really think I got it all. Oh, yeah. Penis says to balls, hey, I'm gonna take you guys inside for a party. Balls reply, you're a fucking liar. You always go inside alone and leave us outside knocking. Wow. <laughs> Eventually, I made my way to a pub, and I caught up with Natalie. After we consumed some great blueberries, we made our way to a sex lounge. My eyeball? Alright. Oh, I have to consume- oh, you're gonna take a picture of my eyeball while I consume the bite? Now, for obvious reasons, I wasn't allowed to film in there, but I'll try doing my best with a solid linguistic description of my experience. And to make it more entertaining, I'll cut in some archives of 1920s nudity. Upon getting there, I was told about the rules and expectations of the venue, and I had to refer them to a consent waiver of sorts. It was an interesting place. It was kind of like a nudist spa. There was a pool with people having sex. There was a bar with people having sex. There were multiple different rooms and apparatus of sorts that aided people in having sex. I attended a seminar there, and a fully clothed woman, perhaps one of the very few there, gave a chat to a room full of partially nude individuals on how they can use porn to further the intimate experiences with a partner. I think they live-streamed that event to an audience on Zoom too, which was kind of interesting. I spent a lot of my time there in the sauna, chatting with a nude German woman with a landing strip. We talked about which part of the world we wanted to die in. It was morbidly beautiful. There was a dungeon room. It had leather straps, a giant sex swing, and some kind of thingy that put you upside down. It kind of looked like some sort of sexual circus. On one floor, there were several beds where partners, major plural here by the way, like major, major plural, could partake in different sexual activities and eventually wipe it down with some tissues and a spray bottle, clearing out the space and residue for the next individuals to come have their fun there. Needless to say, I couldn't really partake in a lot of these activities. None of it really seemed to call me. I did eventually find a yoga mat in the corner of the room we watched that porn seminar in, and I spent most of my time there nibbling on a woman's ear and synchronizing breath with her. I don't think I need a giant sex swing or leather straps or whip to really enjoy the warmth of another. Also, I think we were in one of the only parts of that club that had a bit of music playing, and at some point they started playing Wonderwall. Who the fuck has sex to Oasis? It was my lovely friend Silka's birthday, and we had a barbecue in the rooftop of her sister's condo building.
We got told the dogs aren't allowed up there. We had a dog up there, a fairly tame one too. Soon enough, a woman with a declarative and rather privileged tone told us we had to get the dog out. Now, I didn't want to do that. It's a beautiful animal and I was having a great time with it. So instead of reacting to her, I decided to respond. Now, when you react to things, you are a victim to the circumstance at hand. You've lost control to the anger they've pulled out of you. But when you respond, you don't stoop down to their level. You maintain your ground. You maintain your values and you can lovingly reach an understanding. So I told that woman that it wasn't a dog, and in fact it was a reincarnated soul of our dead friend. He was a peaceful being in his human form, and even more so in his dog incarnation. She was so shocked that she had no other option but to agree and walk away. This is the power of a response. It always beats a reaction. You very much do create the world you're living in, and I choose to create one full of love and laughter. A few days after that, I spent some time breathing some breath into a woman. Midway through that, she whispered in my ear saying she thinks she might be pregnant right now, and how my energy was more potent than the potential father's. She told me that she could feel her being aborting this could have been child. She said something about bonobo apes and the hierarchy of energy exchange, but it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I watched like four different ape documentaries that week, and after all that, it still didn't make a lot of sense to me. The females raise the children, and the males are responsible for the safety of the troop. The troop leader is chief minister, and he's also responsible for law and order. There are some deputy ministers. Their portfolio is mainly defense. And then you have the sentries, whose job is to keep watch and to raise the alarm if they see any danger. They take turns to be on duty. There's a troop living on the banks of the Shingwetsi River. They sleep high up in the river in trees. They like to start the day with a show of acrobatics. Is it possible that your being is able to abort the unborn child within someone? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm going to keep watching documentaries on it, but I still don't know. It's fascinating, though. Gay camping? gay camping? What is gay camping? Uh, I went with a bunch of lesbians. So <laughs> <laughs> I like I like the way you eat sushi. It's kind of beautiful. Yeah. There you go. Let's go, baby. Come on, there you go. All righty.
I recently got really into perfecting my sleep. And as a byproduct of that, I'm not really drinking that much. We're smoking flour either. I'm still going out, I'm still playing some sets, heading to raves, and going to different dance parties, but I'm staying entirely sober. I guess once you notice how much alcohol can really lower your vibration and energy levels, you don't really have the desire to drink anymore. Also, it seriously messes with your microbiome health and your are yeah. So I'm sticking with kombucha, for all for now at least. I really love bonding with friends over healthy and productive activities. Like honestly, there's no better feeling than catching up with friends over deep stretches in a Sunday morning yoga session. A bit ago, I met a lovely human that runs the most tranquil yoga sessions at a local park. You see, that's where true presence exists. Not over bottle service at a nightclub that keeps playing the same Drake track on repeat. There's something really beautiful about partaking in healthy and growing activities with good company. That's a friendship I care for, and goddamn is it pretty. Darkness every day 
sunshine when she's gone. She's always gone too long. Anytime she goes away, 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 away. Anytime she goes away, 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 away. Anytime she goes away. Spirit for Contessa. We're doing crack in the alleyway with a cousin of mine. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Oh, me too. I feel like I've always been the one that finds solace and silence at a party. No matter how great the music is, my being always seems to gravitate towards a nice silent corner where I can find some time to take in a deep breath and really digest the blessing of this existence that I've been gifted. I've always done this for some reason. I'll just find a spot, give myself a minute and just take it all in. Why would someone want to be comfortable? I just don't get it. I take pleasure in doing things that challenge me. There's literally nothing more fun than finding your comfort zone and living right on that edge. Constantly peeking your being into the things that give you that eerie feeling of being in the unknown. Fuck being comfortable. There's quite literally no growth that happens when you're in your comfort zone. Choose discomfort, it's the better choice. We printed a bunch of business cards for a collective. Ooh, that's tremendous. Nice. That's perfect. All right. We're in the stage of growth right now where we're looking for all those like-minded and lovely souls that want to step out of the avoidance that comes to city life and want to presently add their uniquely beautiful beings to community. I love the word lunacy. We are all very much a whims to the altering phases of the moon. That's why I like the Hindu calendar. It goes around the moon. It understands how lunatic we humans really are. It was a supermoon a few days ago, and we did an impromptu and rather beautiful ritual outside a church. Okay, the last energy that we call is the energy of ether, the energy of spirit that's all around us all the time, living in our bones. Every atom of us is divine. Every breath you breathe, every part of the wild world itself is holy. And we soaked in that energy and prepped ourselves for aligning with the highest versions of us, getting ready for this next chapter of existence. Impromptu plans are always my favorite. I got a text saying that a friend of a friend has a speedboat, and if I got by the water in 30 minutes, I'd be able to jump on. So I said, fuck yeah. Tanner who? Tan like sun tan. Oh nice. Yeah. Nice. I'm funny, like <laughs> <laughs> Island. There's got a pond in the middle. I can show you uh, 
on Google Maps. It's a donut. And it's smoking. I've never seen it do that before. Good thing we're close to shore. That's it's weird. Just, I mean, it's not good as a motor thing pulling the gas in this snow. Um, let's, uh, that's really weird. That sort of means oil. It's yeah. an oil problem. Oh, shit. Yeah. You're like, is this how I go? Where should we paddle to? Maybe the... Uh, is there just like there. a CAA right for there. boats? CAA <laughs> <laughs> for boats? Yeah, there is. Oh, there is. Oh. <laughs> uh, but um, it just tr it just tugs me back. There's a dock right there. <sighs> yeah, let's, let's, let's paddle. Let's paddle. Let's paddle in. Irony strikes everybody. We are now paddling the boat. <laughs> As you can see, Misha has great form. Crazy day out in the paddle. Sick with eyes, guys. Here, I'll beatbox. <laughs> Vodka smash <laughs> <laughs> I'm always a bit hot. Okay. How are you? Mystery strip part two. Mystery strip? Are you gonna strip for us? <laughs> we hope you'll take some of your clothes off. Because <laughs> I'll be sweating just by looking at you. Dean recruit to get D his candle delivered, huh? It, it is true. Well, so they're candles? You mean like uh, candles and incense? Like oh wait, you haven't seen my candles. But what, where are you sending them to? I mean, uh, let's see. This one is going to Australia. Biaragura, Victoria. This one is going to Wolfville, Nova Scotia. This one is going to Coquitlam, uh, British Columbia. Oh. Going to Barrie, just north of Toronto. <laughs> Right. Ever been at Tim Hortons? No, never. Oh, you're about wow. to have a blast. <laughs> you got the perfect person to take you there. <laughs> but I went this morning to Rosetta McLean Gardens to, to, to catch butterflies. You went to catch butterflies in the morning? We're tagging monarchs. Tan. Like who? Queen Elizabeth? What do you mean? Monarch butterflies. Uh, oh, they don't like doing U-turns. You don't like doing U-turns? Why is that? It's too emphasized on you? No, it's bad driving. Oh. Most men who own power boats are in their 40s. They stop maturing emotionally and intellectually at the age of 16, and they suffer from erectile dysfunction, which I think means they can't get it up. So, they bought a power boat. So if I buy a power boat, would mm -hmm. you come on it? <laughs> Did you have a nice ride? <laughs> I had a great ride. <laughs> well, then it stopped suddenly. Yeah. They're East York bungalows. But when the people from England mainly came, they built all these little bungalows. And a bungalow is a Hindi, that's from India, a Hindi word, because the English people lived in India and they lived in bungalows. This is the infamous <laughs> Tim is it? Once again. We talk here. Yep, yep. I, I can't order for a <laughs> That's a menu, John. Hi there. 
Hello? John, that's Where the menu. <laughs> Where do we speak to? <laughs> that, <that's... laughs> yeah, can I speak? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I would like a small, regular coffee. A, yes, please. A Canadian maple donut. Yeah, Tan would like. Could I please get a medium ice cap and a Canadian maple donut? No, we have two more. No, no, no. no. Or medium ice cap and a Canadian maple donut as well. Yes, one more thing. Amazing. We'll also get a uh, medium iced coffee. That would be all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi there. How are you? Great. We're hungry. You cannot believe this, but this young man in the back, he's from Colombia. It's his first time in his life that he's been to Tim Hortons. Can you believe that? Doesn't he get a gift for a first, first time, time customer? Uh, okay. Could you do him a favor? Anything, you like if any, you give him a napkin, give him that would one be Just sign a napkin. Yes, I do. Yeah. You speak Spanish? Uh, no, I, I don't speak Spanish. What's your, what's your second language? My, it's uh, Pashto. Oh, okay. Pashto. Yeah. All right. So, Mamnoon. Dari, is it, you're from no, Afghanistan. No, Dari is different. Pashto no. is different. Pashto is more in like Pakistan and Pashto India. Pashto is... Uh, I don't know, I just signed it, man. Thank you. Peshawar. Peshawar. It's ah. a beautiful... You should go... Have you been to Peshawar? Yeah, been, yeah, I, I just came from there. Oh, the food is delicious. Yeah. The street... It's a lot better than Tim Hortons. She's not happy. She wants you to give the order. Grab it. It's yours. Okay. Your pen. We'll get straws. So, thank you very much. Can I say manakam? Manakam, manakam. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> what does that mean? Don't be rude. It's good afternoon in in uh, Tamil. She's how did you how did you know she was Tamil? Because there's a hundred thousand Tamils. <laughs> Sometimes I say the wrong thing, Juan Jose. So I said to this woman, I said, well, "When does the baby do?" Oh, you did not say that. What did she say? I'm not pregnant. <laughs> oh my. She was just fat. <laughs> So, when the people came here, they were from, in England we don't have provinces like Wheeler Province, they have counties and uh, Pickering is from Yorkshire. So I got a question for you. Question mark. You're Colombian, you're British, why is it called British Columbia? More British. It's a Columbia. Yeah, it's Columbia. Oh. Said, oh, I'll take the buildings. I'll take the columns. I'll take all these, all this junk, and he's put it in a big park, and that's what we're going to see. Tan's been here before. I have Are you from Toronto, Megan? Bungalows, donut. Uh, Megan's from Alberta. Yeah. Just. You didn't take it. You haven't seen anything yet. What? Megan. It was winter, it was February, yeah. but you can see that there's a movie. And Megan was there. Yes. Mm -hmm. The beautiful You're Megan. In the middle of two parking spots. That's okay. That's okay, Ken.
it's only about last last summer that we found out about this this place. You see, the people in Scarborough are very friendly. <laughs> So here's the last little tidbit to cap off this film. So last time I was a Gilda and I had a different pair of glasses. We're out here at the Guild. You can see the transition lenses. So you can see the reflection in them. No! Oh! Oh! A pair of glasses that I really liked. They broke not too long ago. I wasn't very happy about that. I got a problem with big corporations, because the truth is, they really view you as nothing but an order number, and I don't like that. So I tend to overshare details when making a complaint, because I feel like it humanizes the process. Here's some snippets from my exchange with them. Good afternoon. I'm emailing today regarding a pair of frames I picked up earlier this year. They're great glasses. And honestly, I was beyond satisfied with the ease of the digital experience around acquiring them. I'm a simple man when it comes to my purchases. I like to get them done and dusted as quickly as possible. There's so much going on in my life that I don't want to devote my precious time and energy to mindless shopping. I love the glasses I purchase. They look great on me, and I have no desire for a new pair. However, recently, one of the legs popped off. A screw seemed to have been loose, and I thought it'd be a simple fix. It was not a simple fix. I gave a few calls, booked an appointment, and physically showed up to a Clearly showroom. Upon getting there, I was promptly told there was no solution to my broken frames, and I must order a new pair. Now, I don't want to do that for several reasons. The primary ones are that I do not believe there's no fix for such a problem, and I don't want to go through the process of searching for a new pair. We're in 2022 now, an incredibly futuristic and technological time. We have self-driving cars, synthetic limbs, and toasters that operate by voice command, and yet I'm told that it's physically impossible to replace a screw in my glasses? I don't understand this. I'm seriously struggling to make sense of this. I like clearly. I like the glasses I have. I want to keep doing business with you. I want to proudly wrap these glasses in my face. What's a viable solution for my problem? Thanks, Tan. To which the company replied, Hi Tan, thank you for reaching out to us. We just want to confirm you're referring to order number blah 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 blah. Just as at your expectations, blah 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 blah. And then they ended up asking me a bunch of questions. Number one, can you tell us when and how exactly it happened? So I replied to their questions. Number one, this incident occurred around a week ago. I was holding an iced coffee and walking down the stairs onto my porch. On the third last step, the glasses came flying off my nose and plummeted straight to the floor. I picked them up and I was really happy to see that they were fine. Later that day, I had lunch with my mother. We hadn't seen each other in quite a while and there was an intense tension in the air. While I was catching up with her, we started talking about my father and how their relationship came to an end. She shed a few tears over that lunch. It was then that I had this pull to take off my glasses and see her without a lens in between. Right then was when the leg popped off. Now I'm not entirely sure if it was the intensity of the conversation and the emotions felt at lunch that had much to do with the breaking of the frames, but there was surely an irony felt in that moment. As if life was telling me that my vision had been skewed on my understandings of my parents' marriage. At the end of it, I ended up getting a major discount and I got some new frames. But, you know, I still feel like I should have been able to fix those glasses. Now it's just going to end up in a landfill somewhere? That just doesn't make sense to me. What a weird world we live in. It's a little screw. Just give me a new little screw. What a weird, weird world. That's pretty much it for this extract. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time where you can consume more of my chaotic being on film. <laughs>
<laughs> no, really, though, I love you guys. I do. I just, you know, so much love for the world. So much love. So much love. Take care. Be good to yourself.